everybody. It's been a while. I'm Chris Kent. I'm a Office Development MVP. I'm on the core team for PMP. I'm currently out of Indianapolis, Indiana, although uh, in like two days I'll be in Knoxville, Tennessee from then on. So that's pretty exciting stuff. But even more exciting is what I got to show you today. So if we go over here, go to our classic Warrior Horses site, as we all have. And the Warrior Horses have decided that the they've got several fallen comrades, right? So they've got a lot of people that have died in the course of their work. Or by people, I mean horses. Um, you know, and what better way to remember those people than by listing them in a SharePoint list? You know, very kind. So we go to our fallen comrades list here. You know, and this is, is nice. Wow. Look at all these people. That you know, could make this a little better. But luckily, with a couple of new uh, functions and operators, we uh, we certainly can. The first thing we're going to show you is what if we wanted to say, this is when they're born, that's when they died. That's great. But I want to. So I'm going to add a format only column by going in here to more. And I'm going to create our calculated column in a minute. All right, there we go. We'll just call this age. All right. Make this calculated column. And again, the reason I use these calculated columns with a formula of equals double quote, double quote, is so that they don't show up in the new and edit forms, but I can apply a format to them. So we'll hit OK here. We'll go back here. Now we've got this nice column I can format. So let's zoom this. We'll format this column. So column settings, format this column. And we'll just type it in directly here. So what those dots for say? Yeah, OK. So we'll type in our little squigglies. All right, and we'll say this is going to be an LM type of uh, div. That sounds great. All right, but the thing we care about is we want to set our text content, right? So in this case, we can actually set this to calculate this age, right? In the past, this has been fairly difficult, um, you know, just because of rounding issues. So let's take a look. So if we wanted to take something like equals number, right? And we'll say died, right? So this is our died column. So if we convert that to a number and we convert the other date, born, to a number, we can actually get the number of milliseconds since 1970, whatever, right? So obviously this is not a very helpful number here. So we'll take a look at, wow, that was their age in milliseconds since 1970-something, right? So that's their age in milliseconds. Really, really helpful. But if we take that and instead we divide that, right? So we'll throw this on here and we'll divide this by, say, what am I dividing by? You know, 1,000 for the milliseconds times 60 for the seconds times 60 for the minutes times 24, all right? And we'll preview that. I did not do Let's just copy and paste what I got over here in the other screen. How's that? Copy that. We'll paste that. All right. So that's the, this will be their age in years. All right. So that's their age in years. We take away the 365, right? We've got their age in days. Great. But that is not helpful. Nobody cares that they live, you know, 0.18. I mean, probably their family. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chuckles. Okay. But one of the things we can do with that, right? So we can add these nice functions here. So we can say a ceiling, right? Because if you live part of a day, you should get credit for the whole day. All right, so we'll say ceiling now. Look at that, we'll knock it off. We'll just round it up to the very next integer, right? Now, if we're doing that by year, right? So times 365, you, know, you don't get credit for an extra year. So we're gonna do something different. We're gonna do floor. So that's gonna round it down to the nearest integer, right? So that's how we get their age, which again, can be really, really helpful. Uh, Using these rounding functions, floor and C would be awesome for things like our pie chart formats or some of the other you know, data bars. When we've been showing those, those percents, we haven't been able to get rid of until recently, you know, like the nine digits of precision there. So this will let you get rid of all that and really clean up your formats in a nice way. All right. So that's beautiful. We'll just save that excitingness. And that's okay. But what if we want to do something else, right? Like maybe we want to highlight people that have died just this year, right? So we can format the current view. And we're going to do a nice thing here. We're going to use an additional row class. So an additional row class provides a way to provide, um, you know, a class across your entire row, and you can do that conditionally. So if I type in additional row class, right, I can do this, and I can just say, you know, if there's a nice new function here, where I can say I can get certain parts of a date. So I can get the year, I can get the month, I can get the day. So in this case, if I wanted to say if get year, it just looks like this, at now, so that's the current date and time, 
equals equal you know, year of the say died. Then I want to apply the class MS BG color. And we'll say theme tertiary because that's a popular color, right? Otherwise, we don't really want to highlight anything. Let's try that out. And bam, everybody that died in 2019 is now highlighted, right? So how kind of us. Now we can see exactly who died. But say we want to take this even further. We want to apply something even further to that. We want to really provide a way to, to honor our comrades. Well, we can use something with our new tile props. This and fun fact, you can actually combine tile props with an additional row class, just like I'm doing here. When I preview that, I got to type in the formatting correctly. So let's try that again. Let's grab all that, paste it in, and we'll just leave off. But you could provide your uh, additional row class inside here as well, or even an additional format. Because when you do tile props, we'll just save that. Now you get this nice tiles feature, right? So if I switch over to the tiles. I can see we have a nice memoriam right to our fallen horse friends, right? We've, we've gone ahead and set that up and you'll see a couple of things we're doing here um, that are interesting besides, you know, playing everything on a tombstone. Um, if we come down here, you'll see this massive looking thing here that's just beautiful. But what it's doing is it's looking at the month, right? And then it's substituting that month. And we're actually able to a custom date format this way, right? We're looking at when it's zero, it's January, you know, when it's the first, it's February. Uh, because for whatever reason, JavaScript decided that months are a zero-based um, index. Either way, that's true over here in formatting as well. But this allows us to provide really nice date formatting. Where in the past we could only do, you know, time or date strings in your locale, right? So now you can really go in here and you can calculate dates between things, right? You can say how long it's been between something highlighted based on the current date. All sorts of really cool stuff. So that is the brand new functions. So let's just review real quick. We jump back over here. Uh, one I didn't cover is the new pow function, and this will just do exponential power. So if you want to do, you know, four squared, you would type in pow and then four and then two, right? And it's going to be 16. But here's our floor. Again, it's going to collapse, and then ceiling is going to collapse up to the next highest integer. All right, very exciting. These are very helpful. Over here, though, is our date part operators, right? So we got the get date, which is just as confusing as in JavaScript, right? Because the get date actually, for a reason, is the day of the month, right? So that's going to be anywhere from 1 to 31, you know, depending on the month. And then get month is going to start with 0, which is important. Remember, that's going to that, I guarantee that's going to cause your problem at some point. Um, so just add a 1, right, if you're looking for the, the, num the numeric value. Um, and then get year is the full four digits for a year. Right, so that's going to be, you know, 2019, not just an all right. So all of those samples I just showed you are available or they will be as soon as I process my own pull request. Um, take a look at those. These are going to be really helpful um, for doing all sorts of cool stuff inside SharePoint. All right, that's all I got.